having a new currency in the country. Do you mean a completely new currency or the, uh, it's still the RTGS dollar? What every country must have is a new currency. The first thing you must understand is that, yes, we created a basket of currencies. The dollar, the rand, the pula, the pound, the euro, and so on and so on. That is, that's a basket of currencies. Mm -hmm. But each single currency belongs to a country. And each country names mm -hmm. its currency. You understand? Right. So Zimbabwe must reach a stage where it has its own currency, which is called Zimbabwe currency. When you, the US dollar or the RTG were introduced, when they were not introduced, as, and government announced that we are introducing a new currency for Zimbabwe, these were measures to deal with the economic situation at the time. We have to move on step one, step two, which I cannot say now, because those are things who were announced when at the appropriate time. We have step one, step two, up to step six. When we reach step six, then we announce what we want for this country, which is the currency for this country. Whether it will be the same RTG or it will be, what's that thing called? Um, bond. Bonds. Bonds, yeah. it, it is at that time that you know <coughs> what we are going to achieve. I will not announce now. No, it must be announced at the appropriate time when uh, implementation is ready. At that stage, all the fundamentals which are necessary will be in place so that uh, no one will be playing around with uh, that currency because then it will be only one currency which will be used in the country. If you have your own uh, dollars in your socks or dollars in your pillow, you will not be able to go and buy bread, you will not be able to go and buy your tie, you will not be able to come and buy this mug with your US dollar because we will have only designated that currency as the legal tender for this country. And any other current currency, you bring it here, you go to the bank or to the, what do you call this, bill of change and uh, change it into Zimbabwe currency, which will then be used for transactions in the country. So we'll be at par with the rest of proud countries or members of the national community. A question is coming through our WhatsApp platform and uh, he asks, can we really expect the new currency to work when we don't have production of exports? Now, what are the fundamentals which must be there? That is one of the things. It is um, it's important that this question is being asked. We cannot just introduce currency when there are the, uh, we have not yet created an economic environment where it can be sustained. Yeah. And to do so, production, production, production must be there. Corruption must be eliminated. The mindset of our people must believe in themselves as a people. So when all those things are in place, that's when we do it. That's when we introduce the currency. So there will be no need of, uh, of other people saying, oh, well, look, I, I, I think I, I'm better with a rand. I think I'm better with a puller. No. As long as you're in Zimbabwe, you'll be better with your own Zimbabwe uh, uh, currency in the, in, in the country, not of other countries. Another question that is coming through your excellence is to say, in the meantime, since the US dollar is, uh, is been a challenge, why don't we join the RAND Monetary Fund? I should ex educate you and the one who asked, uh, just let me give them a bit of education. <laughs> In, in uh, 20, 2008, eh? 2008, 2008. Uh, 2008 yeah. yes, in December, the former administration, which I was in myself, created a committee of five people, and I was one of the five, to say our currency had collapsed in 2008. So in December, we sat down. Because if you go and uh, buy a loaf of bread, you needed uh, two billion Zimbabwe dollars. So everybody was a billionaire. I think some had become zillionaires at that time. So we decided, no, we must do something about it. And then we said, let us approach South Africa so that we adopt the RAND as our domestic currency in Zimbabwe. But when we approached the Reserve Bank of South Africa, they gave us a checklist for us to comply with certain conditions for us to use their dollar. It would mean that what is our GDP? How big is our economy? So we would then need to agree with them to print or to give us 
that quantity of money commensurate with our with our own uh, GDP and of our own economy in, in Zimbabwe. But those some of those conditions we were led to, to achieve that were not acceptable. The same with other countries uh, when we approached them. But we then decided, uh, first it were lawyers, we decided that there was no need in terms of the law to actually uh, have those agreements. Or what is necessary is us in Zimbabwe create a legal framework to make those currencies, a particular currency which we put in a basket, legal tender in Zimbabwe. So th there were no conditions. So the dollar and the um, rand is legal tender in Zimbabwe. The US dollar is legal tender. The pound is legal tender. The, the pula is legal tender. Uh, the e, what is it called? The euro. The, the euro, euro is yeah. legal tender. And so on. The legal tender, they can operate. So up to now, you can't, if you want to, have, uh, to, 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 to use the rand every day, you can go to Messina with your US dollars and go and buy as many rand, uh, rand, uh, runs you want. And use your rand as much as you like. No one will stop you. If you want to pay your workers in runs, go and collect your runs and pay them in rand. The law is there. So there's no need at all to talk about it. Let us do this, let us do that. You see? Mm -hmm. But if you want to designate South African rand as a Zimbabwe rand, there are conditions that must be followed at law.